next time when you go to uh, take shower so think whether you are going to take cold shower or the hot shower so i recommend you to take cold shower because you know now what the cold shower does hey everyone dr mungli here have you ever wondered that uh, why we shiver when we are exposed to cold or when we lose our body temperature a little bit like after peeing so why we shiver so this is because our body is trying to generate uh, energy by shivering and this concept we call it as shivering thermogenesis now today i'm going to talk about uh, something else called as non shivering thermogenesis so on exposure to cold there is a stimulation of sympathetic nervous system in our body which will release norepinephrine and this norepinephrine it will go and bind to beta 3 adrenergic receptors present on a uh, brown adipose tissue and other tissues in our body now what this uh, norepinephrine does by binding to beta 3 adrenergic receptor so uh, on binding to beta 3 adrenergic receptor norepinephrine it is going to mediate a activation of an enzyme called hormone sensitive lipase and now this hormone sensitive lipase enzyme it is going to break down triacylglycerol in our tissues especially in uh, tissue called as brown adipose tissue now when the hormone sensitive lipase is uh, breaking triacylglycerol and releasing free fatty acids and these free fatty acids they will go and activate a protein which is there in the inner mitochondrial membrane called thermogenin thermogenin is also called as uncoupling protein now the ucp1 or uncoupling protein 1 it is richly present in brown adipose tissue why brown adipose tissue is brown it is because it has got lot of mitochondria i have a video on brown adipose tissue the link for that video is there in the description below now let me explain what exactly happens when thermogenin is opened up so the free fatty acids they it will open up the thermogenin and when the thermogenin is opened up so what it does it is going to allow flow of protons into the matrix of mitochondria so in order to understand how exactly cold helps in a non shivering thermogenesis to generate heat in our body we need to understand little bit about electron transport chain mechanism now i have written a uh, inner mitochondrial membrane here and this is an outer mitochondrial membrane and we have intermembrane space here so all cells which contains mitochondria so they will have electron transport chain and there are three complexes which are acting as a pumps in the electron transport chain so what they will do so on oxidation of nadh plus h plus and fadh2 in the mitochondria in the inner mitochondrial membrane they are going to pump protons from the matrix side into the intermembrane space and these protons they will accumulate they will build up in the intermembrane space once the sufficient concentration is built up here so they will start to move into the matrix by atp synthase uh, protein complex so what this atp synthase protein complex does it is going to use the proton motive force that is the energy present in the a uh, proton gradient or the concentration of proton that is built up that energy is used to combine adp with uh, pi to make atp that's how we are going to generate adenosine triphosphate this is the energy currency of our body we are going to generate atp in the mitochondria by using this proton gradient and these atp are used for our metabolic needs now what happens when we are exposed to cold so when we exposed to cold so cold is going to induce the stimulate uh, sympathetic nervous system release norepinephrine norepinephrine binds to norepinephrine receptor and that will activate hormone sensitive lipase and release free fatty acids and as i have shown here in the figure so the cold norepinephrine beta adrenergic receptors hormone sensitive lipase and there is breakdown of triacylglycerol into free fatty acid and that free fatty acid will open up the thermogenin or uncoupling protein so uncoupling proteins they act as ionophores that means they are going to insert a pore in the inner mitochondrial membrane so when they open up so they basically create a pore so the pore is opened up and when the pore is opened up so this proton will move into the matrix side of mitochondria from the intermembrane space without going through atp synthase so when this happens that means many atps are coming through this route rather than going through atp synthase that leads to d 
decrease in the phosphorylation of ADP with PI to make ATP. So this will lead to decrease in ATP synthesis in the mitochondrial matrix. So that means what happens? So the, when the ATP synthesis decreases, these ADPs will increase because they are not converted to ATPs. What these ADPs will do? So ADPs will go and increase TCA cycle. Especially it is going to increase an enzyme in TCA cycle called isocitrate dehydrogenase. Now what happens when the TCA cycle is increased? So the TCA cycle, in TCA cycle we are going to break down a molecule called as acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is oxidized in the TCA cycle to provide NADH plus H plus and FADH2. These are the molecules which will, which will be oxidized in the electron transport chain to, pro, to pump protons across the inner mitochondrial membrane. So when TCA cycle is increased, that means acetyl-CoA is broken down into carbon dioxide to provide NADH plus H plus and FADH2. So because of this, what happens? So the electron transport chain will be running at a faster rate here because it is trying to oxidize NADH plus H plus and FADH2, but and uh, building this proton gradient here, trying to build the proton gradient, but protons are moving through this pore here. So, as so this, whatever the energy that is stored in this particular proton gradient, so which is now not used to make ATPs, so that energy is released as heat. So, this is how, so the uncoupling protein, whenever cold, on exposure to cold, so when the uncoupling protein is opened up, so you are allowing these protons to move through this uncoupling protein and whatever the energy that is stored in that particular proton gradient, so it is not used to make ATP here because they are all passing through this side. So energy is released as heat and this is the heat which will increase the body temperature. So that means whenever we are exposed to cold, so cold is going to activate sympathetic nervous system, release norepinephrine and norepinephrine, it is going to go and bind to norepinephrine receptor, activate hormone sensitive lipase, release free fatty acids and that free fatty acids will open up the pore in the thermogenin and that means your protons from intermembrane space get into the matrix through this pore and the energy present in that proton gradient is released as heat and that heat increasing the body temperature. That means and uh, in response to cold, our body is trying to generate uh, temperature. So that means it is this kind of generation of heat or the body temperature. We refer that as non-shivering thermogenesis. Now, how this non-shivering thermogenesis is going to help in losing weight? So whenever we expose on constant exposure to cold or non constant exposure to cold water or cold temperature, our body is trying to adapt to that new system. So our body is adapt to this cold exposure, constant cold exposure. So that means it is going to induce this thermogenin expression in the inner mitochondrial membrane. It has, there are a lot of studies which, we, which have been shown that uh, cold exposure, constant exposure to cold, it will induce thermogenin in, and also it increases brown adipose tissue in our body. And also it increases thermogenin in all the other tissues other than brown adipose tissue also. That means, so when more thermogenin is there, so your protons are moving through this and trying to generate heat to adapt to the new environment or the new system now. So because of this, how it will help in losing weight? So that because when the protons are moving through this, so your electron transport chain, it is and trying to build this concentration gradient. But as I explained you before, so these protons are moving through this alternate to your route here that is uh, uncoupling proteins releasing heat and uh, lack of, uh, so less number of ATPs are made through ATP synthase. So it means you are oxidizing uh, acetyl-CoA in TCA cycle uh, to generate NADH plus FADH2 uh, to create two pump pro protons into the intermembrane so that your ATP synthase can synthesize ATPs but that is not happening efficiently because these protons are also moving through the alternate route here, releasing heat. So that means our electron transport chain is becoming inefficient. So it is trying to run at a higher rate. So there is an increase in ADPs, less the ADPs. So that means 
PCA cycle is stimulated and this PCA cycle it consumes more and more acetyl CoA. How do you get acetyl CoA? Acetyl CoA you get from oxidation of glucose which is coming from carbohydrates. It is uh, acetyl CoA you can get from oxidation of fatty acid which is there uh, stored in the adipose tissue as triacylglycerol. So you are releasing those fatty acids, you are uh, burning that fatty acid into acetyl CoA, you are burning glucose into acetyl CoA and this acetyl CoA is oxidized in the tissue cycle to provide NADH and FADH2 which are helping in pumping protons through the electron transfer chain then trying to generate ATP here but that is not happening because there is an alternate route for the protons to move into in the matrix of mitochondria. So that means your basal metabolic rate has been increased here to generate same number of ATPs. Note that Oxidation of 1 NADH plus H plus will give you 2.5 ATPs and of 1 FADH2 if it is oxidized in electron transfer chain, it will give you 1.5 ATPs. Now that number, it will change here whenever there is a pore which has been opened up. That means uh, NADH plus H plus and FADH2, they don't give the same number of ATPs. Now, in order to generate same number of ATPs, you need to burn more NADH and more FADH2 that means you need to burn acetyl CoA to provide NADH and FADH2. That means you need to burn glucose and fatty acid to give acetyl CoA. So when this is happening in our body, basal metabolic rate will increase. And increase in the basal metabolic rate will place you into catabolic condition rather than anabolic condition. So when you get into catabolic condition, you are now you are basically breaking the glucose, breaking starch, breaking uh, triacylglycerol in the adipose tissue, releasing fatty acid, and fatty acids are getting into TCA cycle by as uh, acetyl CoA, and they are going to oxidize, going to be oxidized to provide NADH plus FADH. So this means. We are keeping ourselves in a constant catabolic condition rather than anabolic condition and that happens if there are more uncoupling proteins in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now how do you express these uncoupling proteins? How do you increase this uncoupling protein? So constant exposure to cold air has been shown that it increases uh, brown adipose tissue in our body and also it increases uh, uncoupling proteins in variety of uh, our peripheral tissues. So that means Uncoupling action is going on and it is making electron transfer chain inefficient and burning glucose, burning fatty acid to provide acetyl CoA needs of TCA cycle. So this is how it will keep you into catabolic condition rather than anabolic condition. Okay. So next time when you go to uh, take shower, so think whether you are going to take cold shower or the hot shower. So I recommend you to take cold shower because you know now what the cold shower does. So exposure to constant cold temperature, especially the shivering like cold, that kind of uh, cold temperature. So that can induce over a period of time, it doesn't happen uh, immediately, over a period of time. So there is, if you are exposing yourself constantly to cold, so that can lead to general induction of or uh, increased expression of uncoupling proteins in your tissues, increasing the quantity of brown adipose tissue and that can make the electron transport chain inefficient and increasing the TCA cycle burning acetyl CoA that means to get acetyl CoA you need to burn glucose and fatty acid that means you are getting into catabolic condition rather than anabolic condition so that means you are burning uh, that means you are losing triacylglycerol from the adipose tissue. I hope this video has helped you in understanding how exactly cold is helping you in losing weight. So thanks for watching and make sure you click the subscription button there so that you get uh, regular updates whenever I make videos something like this and uh, see you in my next video till then you take care.